What's going on internet? IG back again today and we're checking out the imminent, at the time of the recording of this video, release of Fedora 29. Now I've been playing around with basically what is the release candidate um, and uh, at the time of the recording of this video, which is uh, Tuesday, October 30th, uh, Fedora is due to release. Now, because of the fact I'm in the Southern Hemisphere down in Australia, uh, we kind of come across the 30th of October before the rest of the world does. So by the time you see this video, it should be out and, uh, and you should be able to go and get it. But what I'm using is basically the final release and um, it's been a very long time since I've dug into Fedora. I believe Fedora 24 was possibly the last time I looked at it and, uh, and things have come a long way, especially in the world of GNOME 3. So big story with Fedora 29 is of course going to be GNOME 3.30. And uh, so we'll spend a bit of time on that, but I'm also curious about what sets Fedora apart as a distribution, as a project compared to uh, so many others out there and specifically Ubuntu. So let's dial this in a little bit and let's take a quick look at Fedora 29. Okay, so Fedora 29 is using uh, GNOME Shell 3.30 and it's one of the headlining features of this release. Now, why is that such a big deal? Well, honestly, it's because GNOME has copped a lot of flack in the past for being uh, very incumbent, very uh, resource intensive and not the smoothest or slickest in the, uh, in the field of open source desktop environments. They've attempted to address a lot of the significant memory leaks and other bits that were slowing the desktop down and, uh, and I think right out of the gate, it's just worth saying that Gnome Shell feels to me the best it ever has. And, uh, and for those of you who have been running Ubuntu 18.10 or are just on a rolling release where you get up-to-date software, you will already know and already notice the difference between Gnome Shell uh, or the previous version of Gnome and, uh, and 3.30. Um, in terms of added features, there isn't like there's a whole bunch here to talk about. There are some stuff which I'll get into, but, uh, but on the whole, it's really just a great tidy up. Now, if you aren't familiar, uh, Fedora does use Wayland by default as the display server instead of Xorg. And, uh, and for me, I've actually found it to be a little bit more uh, performant on Wayland than Xorg. I've tried both and I've been playing around with both over the last week. I just feel like it is snappier on Wayland. Now you can see in terms of how much RAM and stuff it's actually using uh, and CPU cycles and all that kind of thing, it is jumping around and it is still pretty heavy compared to uh, compared to the lighter weight um, distributions out there. And honestly, KDE is just magic in this regard in terms of RAM usage. But I don't mind a distribution that uses a decent amount of RAM if it's actually leaving me with an experience that still feels snappy and like there's plenty of uh, plenty of fuel left in the tank as it were. Now this virtual machine has four gigs of RAM so using a gig of that for just the desktop environment would seem a little bit thirsty but having said that this is by far the snappiest GNOME Shell experience that I've had in a very 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 long time. So GNOME Shell 3.30 let's talk actual features and changes here. So first of all, um, one of the main driving things that's behind them, uh, apart from just fixing memory leaks and that kind of thing, uh, part of the new performance or updated performance is as a result of the JavaScript engine that is running GNOME Shell being updated to SpiderMonkey 60. And the curious thing for me is that Ubuntu 18.10 also uses GNOME Shell 3.30 and the team at Canonical are claiming that they've been able to do even more performance tweaks to make it feel snappier. Now, I have been running Ubuntu 18.10 as well as Fedora 29 and I can almost confirm in a very intangible without numbers kind of way that Ubuntu 18.10 does actually feel a little bit snappier so I don't know what in addition to um, just the standard uh, performance tweaks that have been done to GNOME Shell have actually changed here um, but there you have it. Also Nautilus has undergone a few feature changes as well. Uh, everything again around that theme of performance. Uh, rescaling of icon sizes is apparently a lot smoother now. The path bar up the top is apparently a lot more streamlined. As you can see, it's got a lot more of a, a logical layout. If you're gonna dig right into a particular path, you have a very clear readout as to where you're headed and where you are in the file system structure. I appreciate this. It's much more straightforward and easy to get your head around. And the other interesting thing is that they've thrown the search bar into the path bar as well. So if you're searching for a particular uh, file or folder, 
um, simply chucking it up there along with your um, the general path bar is where you're going to find that now. All right, let's talk Software Center. The Software Center on GNOME 3.30 and Fedora 29 as well uh, now can include Flatpak updates by default. Now, of course, they've you know done the standard uh, bug fix and that kind of thing with the with the Software Center, and uh, apparently now Flatpaks will update themselves. Uh, if you have installed the Flatpak using the GNOME Software Center, then you can. Can, uh, rest assured that you don't have to babysit your flat packs or uh, issue a command to make them update themselves. Now, interestingly enough, I'm just going to jump on a side note here back to something that's specific to Fedora 29, and that is in regards to modularity. Now, uh, in the last release of Fedora, they introduced a feature where you could have uh, modular repositories enabled. This means that if you wanted to install two different versions of a particular package, you could do that at the same time and have those two run in parallel without causing major havoc in terms of your system and the dependencies and stuff that was running there. Now that was only enabled for the server editions of Fedora, whereas they have now rolled that feature out across all of the uh, all of the additions and spins of Fedora. So now you can see that the uh, that the repositories are modular by default. It's a very powerful tool and um, and I can imagine a lot of software developers would really appreciate having that flexibility that uh, that having a modular package manager uh, or modular repositories could bring. You can also toggle as to um, you will also get uh, <clears throat> you'll also get notifications by default as to when your flat packs will update and this is in a bit of a contrast to a lot of the background silent updating that goes on with snap packages on the ubuntu side of things they just kind of do it themselves and you don't know when or where um, whereas flat packs uh, when the flat packs automatically update it will let you know here in the uh, it'll give you a notification which is kind of nice now apparently there is supposed to be a new podcast app in gnome 3.30 but uh it's a bit of a weird one in that i can't actually find it in the uh, in the software center here. So if you search for podcast, you can see what comes up, and you get a few different ones to choose from. But uh, but I don't know where it actually is living. Yeah, there is a new podcast app, but I don't know whether you can actually get it on Fedora 29. But it is what it is. It reinforces the point to me that a Fedora 29 release or a new Fedora release and a new GNOME release are very much intertwined. They they borrow a lot of the same release notes because of the fact Fedora presents you with basically vanilla stock GNOME in the way that the GNOME team and the GNOME Foundation work on it. We'll quickly move on to system settings because there are a few new toys to play with in here. So when it comes to system settings, we now have uh, some proper support for Thunderbolt 3. So if you have a Thunderbolt device uh, or a Thunderbolt port, um, you are able to interact with that on, uh, on at the desktop level, which is nice. Uh, also, the sound menu has got over amplification now, so you can amplify things past 100%. Obviously, you're going to want to be careful with that so you don't blow out your speakers, but it is still a nice feature to have. Oh, and you can also choose what sound theme you want as well, which is, uh, which is again, it's one of those things that was uh, back in the day you could do that pretty easily but uh, they've since added that back into GNOME 3.30. Another new feature can be found in disks so now you can actually mount and uh, and dismount uh, Veracrypt volumes uh, natively using the disks app as opposed to uh, before where you had to actually um, install Veracrypt as a separate app so that's kind of nice to see. Finally also GNOME's web browser Epiphany uh, has also got some updates in regards to uh, a read mode so now there is a reader friendly mode that uh, that Firefox and Chrome and other browsers have had for quite a while. Uh, so that's a nice feature to see. Obviously, it's worth mentioning that Fedora considers Firefox to be the default web browser. And so that's what you're going to get out of the box. But still. All right. So that is plenty about GNOME 3.30. But what's actually new to uh, Fedora 29? Well, as I touched on before, you've got the modularity with the repositories. Uh, overall performance tweaks, and then you've got stuff that's related to the Linux kernel 4.18. So uh, again, updated graphics stack, so you've got a bit better performance when it comes to uh, games. And I also believe that includes um, a lot of the Gallium 9 support. So you've got better um, open source uh, version of DirectX 9 support. So that's really gonna help for uh, Steam play and uh, running games through Wine and that kind of thing. So if you have older games kicking around, then uh, Fedora 29 along 
with Ubuntu 18.10 and others running the, the latest kernel are going to be able to uh, benefit from having that updated graphics stack. Um, it's also worth mentioning that I think the battery life on laptops has gotten a lot better with uh, kernel 4.18 as well and, um, and it's just overall um, trending across Linux distributions that a lot of them are starting to remove the laptop power saving tools like TLP and that kind of thing because of the fact that kernel is getting pretty good at figuring out um, at figuring out more intelligent power management. So I realize this has been like a very technical run through of what is new to Fedora and what is new in, in this space. But I think Fedora to me exists as, as a showcase of what, uh, of what open source software looks like in its sort of purest form. Um, Fedora obviously acts as a test bed for, um, for future releases of, uh, Red Hat's commercial offerings. And, uh, but to that degree, Fedora has a has a fantastic community behind it, and if you are after a distribution that is uh, it is release based, but still has the flexibility to be able to upgrade to the latest releases without sacrificing stability or efficiency, then you should consider giving Fedora a try. Now, probably my biggest recommendation, if you are going to try Fedora for yourself, would be to uh, familiarize yourself with the tool Fedi. Fedi is a fantastic tool that can be used to uh, do all of the stuff that Fedora won't uh, won't do out of the box for the sake of maintaining an open source license. That does restrict them in terms of what they can include. Things like smoother font rendering isn't included out of the box. Things like, uh, you know, Flash and Codex and all of that kind of thing. Um, and it's not that hard to do, honestly, outside of using a tool. Um, you can, you know, jump in, enable some repositories that are actually very easy to enable in the software center. It's literally, I'll show you what it looks like. You jump in here, you go to software repositories and you can see um, Fedora will actually ask you when you boot up the system for the first time, do you want to have third party repositories enabled? And you can come in here and enable them, things like NVIDIA drivers, Steam, that kind of thing. So all of those um, repositories are there for you to enable very easily. And once you've enabled them and uh, and you install a tool like Fedi, uh, it makes it a lot easier to turn Fedora into a desktop that you would be um, that you'd be up to feature parity with any, uh, you know, Linux operating system out there. If you do choose to go with Fedora and you install Fedora 29, uh, you will then have a very smooth and relatively easy upgrade path to Fedora 30 and the subsequent releases. And then the same could be said if you're already running Fedora, it's a pretty straightforward process to update to the latest release. So. Is it worth updating to this release? Um, absolutely. I think over the last uh, over the last week and a half that I've been using this in its release candidate form, um, there's been some updates that have come through, which is great. Um, and but honestly, I haven't experienced any crashes whatsoever. Um, I haven't experienced any uh, bugs or, or anything like that in in the sort of poking around that I've been doing. Um, and while your mileage is probably going to vary, I feel like I have a hunch that this is definitely one of Fedora's uh, good releases. And if you talk to Fedora fans long enough, they'll agree that there are some good releases and not so good releases. So Fedora 29 can be recommended. And I'm gonna leave a comment in the uh, in the comment section below and give it a thumbs up if you want to see a detailed comparison between uh, Ubuntu 18.10 and Fedora 29, because there is a lot of shared uh, shared engineering going on there. There's a lot of uh, there's a lot of stuff that they have in common, but they do also do things distinctly different uh, from each other. And uh, so for me, I think it would be an interesting comparison between the two of these uh, between these two distributions. But I think Fedora is a shining example of what a release-based distribution can look like, uh, and it's definitely the showcase of what open source software can look like. Once you install GNOME Tweak Tool and Fedi, you've got a very potent desktop ready to roll. Well, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you think about Fedora in the comments below, and, uh, and I will see you all in the very next video. Peace out, ladies and gentlemen.